Hello and welcome to another episode of Mean Brews. Today I'm covering English barley wine. We've already done American, so let's do the English one. Um, I found 33 English barley wine recipes. Two were best of show, 18 gold, four silver, one bronze, and eight were award winning. Uh, here's the histogram of the recipes that I found dating back all the way to 1985 when barley wine was just one style. Um, into the 2000s, they split them out into American and um, uh, English varieties. I tried not to pick the styles or the recipes back in the 80s and 90s that had a lot of American hops uh, since they were combined. Uh, so not to distort the data here. The BJCP style is 17D, a strong and richly malty ale with a pleasant fruity or hoppy depth, a winter time sipper with a full chewy body and warming alcohol. Um, when I look at the style, there's a, a moderate amount of evolution uh, through the years, uh, almost four decades, and um, a little bit of variation between recipes on what they're using. We'll walk through that as we go through the data. The original gravity, um, BJCP range is anywhere between 1.080 and 1.120, and the winning recipes went beyond that, 1.075 to 1.140, very big beers. The mean was right at 1.11, um, which was on the high side of the BJCP range, and not any evolution we're seeing here on the original gravity um, over time. Final Gravity, again, um, the, the winning recipes varied outside of the BJCP range with uh, the average 1.027 on the high side of the BJCP range. I'm going to be higher than that just because of the yeast that I chose uh, and the malts that I chose here. IBUs, a little bit closer tied, um, almost in the mid-range of BJCP. Uh, 54 IBUs was the average. Um, seems to, seems high, but to balance out that big malt uh, character, you need a lot of IBUs here. Uh, I'll be at 50 because we are seeing a, a slight trend with pretty good uh, Pearson's coefficient uh, down to about 50 or even below 50 here. Color anywhere, BJCP range is 8 to uh, 22. What I found a little shocking is there were no winning recipes less than the mid-range for BJCP. Um, so 15 IBUs was where it started, and that's right in the middle of where BJCP it says. So try to aim dark for this style if you want to win in competitions. Um, what's the average here? Average was 20 SRM or 38 EBC. And with the malt bill that I have, I'm going to be on the high side of that. So a little bit darker than the mean. We look at the malt percentages, we're at 88% base malt, um, crystal 7.4%, um, toasted malts 2.6, adjuncts 2.2, and roast 0.3%, just a little bit of roast. Um, looking at if the recipes used those malts, how much, what was the average there? 100% um, used base malt, of course, at right at about 80, between 85 and 90 percent of the grist was the mean all the way down to about 65 to 70 percent was the low end and 100 percent base malt for some um, I'm going to be right at that mean I'm not seeing any change so no no reason to change it zooming on the specialty malts um, about 85 percent of the recipes used a crystal malt and if they used it they used it about nine percent of the grist um, 40%, a little over 40% used a toasted malt at about 6% of the grist. And then for our roast malts and adjuncts, where less than a third of the recipes use these, just a little bit of roast for color. Or the adjuncts really, really ranged here between a third of the grist to uh, only about 2%. Sweet spot for adjuncts was about 8% of the grist. Uh, I'll be using crystal, a little bit under the average and toast a little bit under as well. 4% for toast and about 7 to 8% for crystal malts. When you look at the base malts they used, um, some sort of Maris Otter, Golden Promise, or Pale British Malt was the most commonly used at around 80% of the grist. 
100 percent of the recipes use this type of malt um, i'll be right at the the mean there about 80 percent 80 to 85 percent of the grist um, would be uh, maris otter and then right at the mean for the wheat malt which is just over a third of the recipes use wheat malt and i'll be at the average there about six percent of the grist munich and vienna were also used but in very small proportion of the recipes uh, a quarter to ten percent each i'm um, sorry sorry for cutting off up here um crystal malts um most prominent are a light crystal and a medium crystal right there about 45 percent of the recipes each and right at about five to six percent of the grist <coughs> excuse me next most prominent is dark crystal little over a quarter of the recipes use a dark crystal, uh, between 4 to 5 percent of the grist. Um, and then we're seeing carapils, uh, about 20, 15 to 20 percent of the recipes use uh, a carapils at about 5 percent. And then special B was used at right, really narrow curve here, 2 percent of the grist. Special B was uh, used in 15 percent of the recipes. I'll be using um, for my medium crystal about 3 percent. For my dark crystal, uh, around that, uh, which is about two and a half percent, and then special B, uh, I'll be using as well. I think both of these cur these are lined up. Uh, I'm using the same amount of medium and, and uh, light crystal because they lined up perfectly, and this gives me my percentage that lines up with the overall crystal. And you'll see why I'm picking special B, even though it's only used in a, a few recipes. Well, first we'll look at. Um, the amount of crystal, dark crystal used, um, ranging, you know, we're seeing a good correlation here that more and more recipes are using uh, a higher amount of dark crystal at around 5% of the grist. Uh, we're also seeing this is usage of, of special B from nothing to 50% of the recipes are using it now. So um, I think a little bit of special B is really shown up recently as being uh, successful in competition, so I'm putting a little bit in this recipe. For toasted malts, aromatic is uh, the most commonly used in a quarter to uh, a third of the recipes, and then biscuit, uh, amber, melanoidin, and special roast were used in very few recipes. I'm gonna use aromatic at about 4%, just because the overall toast uh, propensity of use is high enough to warrant using uh, a toasted malt in this recipe. Uh, we're also seeing, um, if you look at this curve, it's the, the usage of toast in a recipe versus the amount of toast in a recipe. Both of those are increasing with time. So good, both very pretty good correlation coefficients. Um, we're at about 70% of the recipes using toast. If you follow the trend, at about 4% of the grist uh, for the blue curve. Roasted malts, um, not a lot used. Black malt and chocolate malt, uh, very few. A quarter of the recipes use chocolate in very small amounts, 1%. This is just to get the color they're aiming for. Um, I don't need to worry about color, so I haven't put a, a roast malt in here. I'm getting my color from my other grains. Adjuncts, uh, honey was the most prominent. Uh, tenth of the recipes used honey, and uh, then some other sugars, turbinado, demara, invert sugar, and flaked barley in one or two recipes each. On to the hops, we had 20 different bittering hops used. Uh, the most common were EKG, Challenger, Target, Willamette, Fuggles. That's more than almost two-thirds of the recipes, and then some others over here, and then some one-offs uh, other recipes took a, 30, a third of the whole uh, chart here. Uh, I'm going to use EKG just because it's the most common. Uh, flavor hops, EKG, Fuggles, Willamette, Challenger, and then another big chunk of one-offs, or one only hop that was used in one recipe for flavor. A total of seven were used, uh, and I'm going to use EKG here as well. Uh, aroma hops, um, not sure why these aren't showing percentages, but uh, EKG, 28%, uh, Willamette, Cas Cascade, Challenger, Fuggles, Liberty. Um, again, I'm going to use EKG for aroma hops. Uh, there were some recipes that used dry hops, and they all used Fuggles. 
Um, I am not going to use a dry hop in this recipe. Uh, when you look at the um, number of recipes that use these uh, hop additions, right around two-thirds each uh, flavor and aroma additions were added, and we had a huge range between very lightly hopped and very heavily hopped uh, recipes, even for English barley wine, a surprisingly winning in, in this style. And I think it's probably because the age of people put it, the age of the beer that people are putting these uh, into competition, these hops are going to fade over time. Uh, and again, we see the dry hops over here in uh, very few recipes in a very pretty tight band of, of usage. Um, I'll be using for my flavor addition right at the mean, uh, and then a little bit less on my aroma. Um, we are seeing a, a greater and greater use of flavor hops uh, addition. Almost to all, all recipes are using, or 90 to 100 percent of the recipes using a flavor hop addition. Good correlation coefficient. Uh, aroma ounce per gallon, this is why I'm using 0.2 because we're seeing a trend down on the amount of hops used at the uh, finish of the end of the boil. <clears throat> Mash type, we had one decoction, um, a few step mashes, but mostly single infusion. So I'll stick with the single infusion mash there. Our temperatures, um, we had a uh, acid rest or uh, beta glucan rest here at 115. Uh, protein rest, a tenth of the recipes used a protein rest at around 123. Uh, we had one recipe use a beta and an alpha, uh, 148 for the beta, and the average for the alpha was 152. Uh, I believe I'm going to be on the low side of that, around 150, and that's because we're seeing a change, good correlation coefficient, change in temperature uh, to 150 for the main sacrification rest. Duration of the boil, you'd expect a longer boil for this style just because you're going to try to concentrate the wort in the kettle to achieve your original gravity. Anywhere between 60 and 180 minutes. Um, that's three hours. Uh, the average was just above 90. Uh, 97 minutes was the average. And I'm going to shoot for 90, but feel free to boil however long you need to to achieve the uh, original gravity that you need. Yeast used, uh, Fuller's was the most prominent, uh, Worthington White Shield next, uh, Chico Whitbread, there was a, there was a uh, I think this is French Saison <laughs> in a barley wine that won, won a medal, uh, Anchor, and then a bunch of one-off single single variety strains. Um, I'm going to stick with Fuller's uh, classic, classic yeast for this style. Water chemistry, um, calcium anywhere between around 30 to 80, magnesium 10 to 20, sodium high. This is pretty high for sodium, so 20 to 100 parts per million, parts per million, with an average of 57. Sulfate, not too, not too uh, hard water here, um, 30 to 110, and then chlorides, 30, around 30 to 100. Uh, so my the averages here were 60 for calcium, 15, magnesium, 57, sodium, pretty balanced sulfate to chloride ratio of 68 sulfate and 54 chlorides. And I'm going to be trying to hit those numbers um, on the spot for the sulfates and chlorides. A little low on the calcium, but you'll get that from your malt. Uh, fermentation temperatures, um, the average was 66 for when you look regardless of strain. Our four most common strains were Fuller's, Chico, I think that's Worthington, and um, I can't remember, 007, uh, SO4. Um, I'm going to use um, 002 Fuller's, and it's, again, at 66. Pretty wide range here. Um, whatever style, come back to this chart if you want to choose a different yeast just to see what people have used with success uh, in competition. Uh it seems like uh, people really going for the clean style, clean clean beer without a lot of esters. We use 001, a lower temperature, and then higher temperatures for the British uh, strains that give you more ester profile here. This was interesting. Um, I tracked how many months post-bottling um, people aged this beer before they entered the competition that they won at. Um, so... 
if you do want to compete with this style, you need to wait more than a year, um, anywhere up to three years before you enter it uh, to have the most success in competition. So I think the average was, uh, well, you can tell here, about 16 months. Uh, so one and a quarter year, one year, three months uh, to, to, to hit the sweet spot when it's going to start being at its peak. Uh, so keep that in mind if you're going to compete with this style. Other variables, uh, carbonation volumes was uh, 2.37. Mash pH was pretty low at 5.33. All right, um, just recapping the Mean Brews recipe. Uh, about 82% Maris Otter, um, seven, about 7% 7 wheat malt, 4% aromatic uh, for my toast, and then we've got a bunch of crystal malts. Uh, 2.4 um, crystal 20. Um, medium crystal 2.2, dark crystal 2.1, and uh, special B of around probably about 1% of the grist. <clears throat> All my hops are going to be EKG. Um, I'm going to get 36 IBUs out of my bittering edition because I'm doing a 90 minute boil. 0 0.3 ounce per gallon or 2.2 grams per liter of EKG at 15. Uh, 0. 2 ounce per gallon or 1.5 grams per liter at 5 minutes or flame out. And then fuller strain, which is all these white labs, 002, Y yeast, 1968, AO9 pub or OIL 016, they're all the same strain. Um, so use your favorite yeast vendor to, to ferment this with. Uh, original gravity 1.110 uh, at about 50 IBUs. Uh, I'm not going to recap the water profile. We just went through that. Uh, 5.33 mash pH is where it comes out with my recipe. Uh, infusion mash at 150 Fahrenheit or 66 Celsius because that's where it's trending. Uh, mash out, sparge, and boil for 90 minutes or as long as it takes to um, achieve the original gravity you need. Um, chill to 64 Fahrenheit, 18 Celsius. And I'm going to pitch a three liter starter into a five gallon batch. Uh, ferment at 66 or 19 for 21 days. That was the average. I know I didn't present that, but people left it on the yeast for three weeks before they transferred for aging. Uh, bottle keg to 2.3 volumes of CO2 and then age 16 or 17 months before you enter a competition. All right. Um, that concludes the... English barley wine. I've decided for the next style, I'm going to um, go out of my wheelhouse and, and um, present on Goza. So I know it's a very popular style. Um, I've never actually competed with one. Well, I have with a fruited Goza, but never with a straight Goza. And I've never brewed one because I don't really like the beer uh, Goza style. However, a lot of people are asking for it. So uh, I'll cover that in the next video. So until then, have a great weekend. Bye-bye.